Hey guys, Magnum here. Today, I'm going to be bringing you another tutorial. This time, I'm going to be teaching you how to make steamer driver wheels. And of course, for this, you're going to need S-Props, you're going to need the precision alignment tool, and you're going to need the precision tool. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to pick out which kind of wheel we're using. I'm using the 72 unit drivers. They can be found here. And of course you can change the body groups to give them the uh, mounting points there. And uh, you can change the skin too, but I'm going to leave it as skin 1 because it helps uh, show how things work. And you can need to hit both of the precision tool to apply the settings and auto align them to 45 degrees. I already did this. So in this tutorial we're going to be making a uh, six coupled wheel set, which basically means we need three axles. We're going to stack them up end to end like that. And of course, we're going to put the base block. I've already selected this. This one is 240 units long, right in the middle there. So that it kind of divides this in two. Okay, so now that we have the wheels attached, the first thing we need to do is we need to make the wheels spin. So these outer two are going to be axis centered to the base block directly. This middle one, we're going to use a little trick to make sure that it doesn't collide with the world and allows the train to go around curves better. So to do that, we're going to start off with a gate. Uh, I changed this using a console command. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, you go copy the model from the Q menu, spawn menu, and then type wire underscore gates underscore model, and then paste the model path. And that'll change the model to anything you want, in our case, a S props 12 by 12 by 12 cube. We're going to hit that with the precision tool to apply settings and then move the mass centers together so that this gate is directly at the center of this wheel axis. <coughs> then we're going to axis center the gate to the base plate and we're going to parent this wheel to the gate. Now we're going to just test this over here, unfreeze it, and we're going to make sure all the wheels spin. Now you can't spin this one by grabbing it, but you can spin it by grabbing the gate. And this one spins. Now we need to make sure that they all spin together. So for that we're going to go to Ball Socket Advanced. Um, I, have the, uh, I have the Mr. White presets installed, but we're going to do an XYZ lock, which is X minimum is negative 0.1, X maximum is 0.1, Y minimum is negative 0.1, Y maximum 0.1, all the minimums are negative 0.1, and all the maximum is 0.1. Uh, no friction, and of course free movement needs to be ticked. And what we're going to do is this wheel to this wheel, the gate to this wheel, and the gate to this wheel again. And of course we need to weight all of these properly, so let's take out 10,000. Stick it on there, stick it on there. 10,000 on the gate, not the wheel. And 10,000 on the base plate. Let's copy again. And they should now all spin in unison, which they do. Okay, now that we make sure that the wheels are properly constrained, we're going to need to put a uh, main sidebar on it. That might not be the right term, but whatever. Now, the distance from these little mounting points I measured is approximately 164 units. Yeah, 164 units. Exactly. So, as it just so happens, there is no S-Props bar exactly that length, or even relatively close to it. So what we're going to do is choose the one size smaller than that, which is 144. And we're going to move that to the center of the wheel, like so. And then we're going to nudge it down 16 units for the uh, large S-Props wheels. The distance between the center point there and the uh, mounting point is 16 units. Of course, make sure this is not the push-pull percent thing, make sure that's not ticked. And we nudge it down 16 units, and it's on the same level as those. Roughly. Right, now we're going to add these extension props onto the main bar, so that it looks like it covers all the attachment points. 
Uh, these are 12 units long here. As props bars. Just kind of slide those onto the end there. Now for these cylinders, it gets a bit more complicated. Remember how I said there's a distance of 16 units between the center and there? So we're going to place a point there. I'm going to press R, and we go into the points menu. Double click this in point 1. I already have 16 set, so we're going to subtract 16 from the Z, and press set again. Oh look, and that moves the point down, 16 units. How handy is that? Point 2 there, and slide that on. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Select, subtract, set. And hell, why not? We'll do it right here. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you place a second point. Select, subtract, set. And move. There we go. Now we have them all in place. Now we're going to parent these to the... Well, we're going to parent these to a gate attached to the main sidebar, so place a gate right there, roughly. Select that, 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 and that. Wait a few seconds for the tool to recognize the props, and then right-click on the gate. And there we go, those are now parented. And now we're going to access the main sidebar to the wheels to make sure that it goes around as the wheels turn. This can be a bit tricky, so I'm going to walk you through this as well. We're going to use precision alignment axes to attach these two. Now, how the way precision alignment constraints work is you need two points. One here, and one here, for example, to form a line. And these points have to atta be attached to the entities that are going to be constraining. So I'm going to attach one of them here to this wheel. You know, so the green line goes to that wheel. Select the main rod. Attach the other point to that. And then we're going to go to Constraints. Axis is the default one, which is what we want. Select one in here, two in there. Click Create Constraint. And we're going to repeat on the other side. Pass Center, and hit Pause on the outside. Attach point one to there, point two to there, and create the constraint. Now let's uh, copy. Oh yeah, and um, don't forget to make all non-parented props no-collide with everything by right-clicking with the no-collide tool. Might as well do that on the original as well. Unfreeze the prototype. And now the main side rod spins along with the wheels. How crazy is that? That's pretty awesome. Now we continue on to the connecting rod and piston bar assembly. This is the extremely tricky part because we need to use mathematics. We're going to need a calculator that's capable of doing trigonometry, like a scientific or graphing calculator, and make sure it's in degree mode. Now, I've already picked out a length for the connecting bar. This one is 96 units long, and we're going to calculate the arc sine, or the inverse sine, of 16, which is this length, divided by 96, which is this length. And that comes out to be approximately 9.59. I'm going to round it to that. And that's basically the angle that we need to rotate this so it lines up exactly with the center of the wheel. So we're going to move that bar into the joint right there. And we're going to make a line with hit pause and hit normal right in the center there. Make sure that's still uh, selected, and go to Rotation, select Line 1, and remember our angle was 9.59, so we're going to type that in, 9.59, and we're going to make it negative because we're rotating clockwise, and press Rotate Entity. Now, it may not look it at first, but this is actually perfectly lined up, the center of this is perfectly lined up with that line of wheels. line, deselect, and then of course this bar right here, which is the piston rod, this can be slid right onto the end. Now 
If for some reason you happen to be copying this tutorial exactly, you know, following my words to the letter, um, please make sure that you use a 60 long instead of a 48 like I did. I didn't realize until after I uh, cut the scene there, and I don't feel like redoing the entire thing. So change this one from 48 to 60. Thank you.